Why does fat loss slow down as you get leaner? Are you doing something wrong or is this something to expect? Let's explore. In this video, we cover four major reasons why your progress slows as you get leaner. We think these four untapped concepts are so important because if you don't understand them, you might fall into the idea of working inefficiently. It just slows down. It is what it is. We don't want that. So we hope you stay and watch. Right, let's start with some background. Just kidding. There are many ways people lose weight. And things like calorie restricted diets or running marathons work to an extent, but they're not that targeted or efficient. This is even true for more targeted systems like our Belly Proof program. Sooner or later, there is a point when you start hitting a weight loss plateau and it feels like you can't go any further. Even when you walk fast, you will see the rate of weight loss change one day to the next. And while you never quite flatline in your progress, you will see it slowing down as you get leaner. Here are the four reasons why it happens and what to expect on your belly proof journey. Reason one, glycogen depletion. Your body holds glycogen, a storage form of carbohydrates. Glycogen is direct competition for fat burning or fatty acid oxidation in the mitochondria. As you deplete glycogen, you increase the chances of burning fatty acid in the mitochondria rather than glycogen resulting in more fat loss. The reason it matters so much is because glycogen binds around three to five times its own mass in water. On average, your muscles hold 600 grams of glycogen and your liver about 80. So 600 to 700 grams of glycogen. That means your body will also hold up to five times the water content that binds with it. This is also the reason when people diet hard, go low carb or keto, or even do a lot of aerobic exercise, they will burn a lot of this glycogen off, making them feel they are progressing really, really fast. At least in the first few weeks. It's also the reason why, when they go on holiday, they put the weight back on quickly, because it's not body fat. It's 600 to 700 grams of glycogen and another few kilos of water. That's what you call yo-yo weight and it's got nothing to do with body fat. When you do the belly proof program, you will initially lose a bit more in the first week, at least on the scale, because of the glycogen depletion. We know eventually when you finish the program, you'll have some more carby treats, which will restore glycogen. So we spend the last three to four days of the program doing exactly that. That means, say you started at 100 kilos, regardless how fast or slow you progress. If you end up at 70 kilos, you can be sure it's body fat. Any glycogen depletion you would have experienced is restored before your final day. Reason number two is water retention, which ironically is what happens when you dive with your shorts into the sea. When you do the Belly Proof program, we recommend some optional supplements like creatine. The main benefit of creatine during weight loss is an impressive increase in training performance, mainly an increase in power output. Creatine pulls a lot of water into your muscles, on average between an extra 2 and 4 kg once it's fully loaded. If you increase the water content of a muscle cell, you should experience more water around the cell as well. See, in the first one or two weeks, you might be losing 3 to 4 kilograms of glycogen, but you're also putting on 3 to 4 kilograms in water retention due to creatine intake. This is true for a few other supplements. The reason it's important is because some of that water collects around your belly. We aim to offset these too, so that you don't have loads of water retention masking the Phoenicians around the muscles. 10 days before the end, we drop creatine and the added water retention to help reveal the results we've worked so hard for. So if you think, uh, I'm not lean enough, before you enter the final phase, just remember some of it is water retention that we put there and we will take the water retention out as you come to the end of the program. Reason number three is improved fitness and the importance of checkpoints. 
regardless of how fit or unfit you are when you start the program, you will be fitter in the third week than you were to start with. This is not just because of general exercise, but also because we help you build stability and capacity into a lot of basic movement, i.e. working on your foundations. The flip side of it is that you need to assess whether you are indeed working as hard as you should. A, because you are lighter in weight, and B, because you get stronger. So for instance, if you've been at it for a few weeks and say lost 10 kilograms and try a pull-up, not only have you had a few weeks to get stronger at pull-ups, you are also pulling 10 kilograms less, meaning you are training with less resistance. So ask yourself, can you now train at a higher intensity? Because what was once hard might now be easy. The fourth reason is one of the least obvious, but one of the most important to understand. The ratio of stubborn fat you're dealing with changes when you progress correctly. Yes, me? Comfort. Not Aussie fat is the same. Je ne sais pas pourquoi. The majority of fat in your body, including visceral fat, receives a decent supply of blood. And if you're lucky, it's high in beta receptors. With a good approach, you can work through it relatively fast. Stubborn fat is very high in alpha-2 and cortisol receptors. It doesn't receive good blood supply and it's very hard to break. A good example of this is lower belly fat, love handles and back fat. This fat is harder to deal with and therefore slower to lose. Non-strategic approaches to weight loss, like just doing lots of cardio, weights or dieting hard, they do not address lipolysis and oxidation efficiently. And also they do not address factors like alpha-2 receptors. The thing is, because they are not strategic, any progress you do see is likely to be with regular fat. With these approaches, you can expect stubborn fat to progress at a staggeringly slow pace. If you follow our strategic belly proof approach, you can expect to lose normal fat, that's both visceral and subcutaneous, at a much higher pace, as well as stubborn fat at a slow to medium pace. To put it into an example, say you had 30 kilograms of fat to lose, out of which six of that is likely to be stubborn. In the first two weeks, you may have lost five kilograms, four of which regular fat, and one of which is stubborn. You now have less fat to lose, less surface area, if you will. So therefore your body has less surface area to extract fat from. Another three weeks gone by and you lost another five kilos, out of which four were regular fat and one was stubborn fat. Um, a little bit slower, but still very decent progress. You've now reduced your overall fat by 10 kilograms, both stubborn and regular fat, and you look better for it. But now you notice your stubborn fat more because even though it's going, it's going at a slower pace. Few more weeks of progress and you feel like you're nearly there, almost ripped. This is the confusing point where it seems like everything is going too slow, even though you might be doing everything the right way. Remember, even if you do the belly proof program perfectly and you cut through all types of fat strategically, stubborn fat, like the one in your belly, is still a longer process and that's partly why it's called stubborn. And it's all to do with those pesky alpha-2 receptive monsters walking behind me. It's only natural that as you finish with the shorter process of regular fat, the slower process of stubborn fat is still moving forward, it's just slower. After all, in the first two weeks, you've lost five kilograms. Then the next three weeks, another five kilograms. And currently, you're barely losing one kilogram a week. And while initially it may sound depressing, hopefully you can now begin to understand that you're still making good progress. You've done all the easy stuff, which leaves you only the stubborn stuff to tackle. Progress is still made here, but it's slower. Hope this is useful, especially if you were wondering whether you're doing well or not. The only thing you can do is be aware of those four points and do your best to follow all the practices set in the belly proof program. And eventually, like all our belly proofers, you will get there. One last tip if you are currently doing the program. If you're not committed to a deadline, we recommend you start the last 10 days when you're close to your body fat goal even if it doesn't feel like you're there yet. If you are indeed close to your target goal and you no longer have much stubborn fat left, what will happen in the last 10 days is the following. You can expect a little bit more fat loss, the reversal of water retention, including that around your tummy and the replenishment of some glycogen in your muscles. 
which will make them feel full again. This will make whatever fat you have got left look less significant. Ripped for men is usually 8 to 10% body fat, and women should usually aim to be 17 to 21% to be lean and curvy. So, it's less about forever chasing that front cover perfect body image and more about getting your body fat levels where you think they should be and then starting the last 10 days. We hope this makes more sense to you now and we're curious to hear about your experience. Did it seem like your progress slowed down as you approached your goal? Let us know in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and until next time, stay... Belly Proof!